Quest. You ever want to do something and you know that it is probably dumb for most people. Uh, you want your computer to do something and you know that for most people using your computer, uh, using a computer, that this would not be a good idea. Well, this is one of those times for me. Uh, my wife and I have been talking. One of the little things that we want to do at night, we want to make sure we shut the computer down. Now, the way that the Ubuntu uh, defaults go, if I go right here to shut down and I were to click on shut down, it won't actually shut down the computer right now. Uh, why won't it shut down the computer? Because uh, my wife is logged in. And when you have multiple users logged in, both sides have to log out, or there is another way to do it too, but both sides pretty much have to log out in order to shut down the computer. That's annoying. Now, there's really good reasons why the defaults come with this, this feature. Uh, the, main, the main reason that it's set to this way by default is that you know if I'm working on something on my desktop and I get up to leave and my wife logs onto her desktop and does some things and then at the end she wants to shut down the computer uh, she can't shut it down she shuts it down and it won't shut down because I have my unsaved work still up there here's the thing if either I or my wife get up from the computer we've almost always got all our unsaved work saved it just doesn't happen very much that 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 becomes a useful feature um, and it's annoying to have to have us both log out in order to shut down the computer. Uh, it's nice that we can each have our own screens so that the stuff on my screen isn't on her screen and it kind of, um, except for our budget, which we have on both our screens because uh, we want that. But, you know, it's, it's annoying to, to, to have to shut them both down. And a lot of times my wife will even forget that she has to. And she'll shut down the computer before bed, and I'll wake up in the morning, and I'll turn on the computer, and oh, it's actually on. It's been on all night, because I was logged in, and so it didn't shut down when she tried to. So we're going to change that default. Uh, there's a, a few things that we'll want to, want to do uh, in order to do that. The first thing we'll need to do is we're gonna, going to need to go to a terminal. Now, I have my terminal right there, because... I use it fairly often, uh, but even if you don't, you go like that, and that gets you your terminal. Uh, and your terminal is where you can input the commands that we're going to need to do that. The first word thing we're going to need to put in is our sudo. Uh, sudo is a super doer, super user. Uh, it's the person who is, is, it's a command that allows you root access to some of the most basic processes of the computer. The stuff that in general, the user isn't going to want to have access to, but it'll make you allow you to make any kind of changes anytime. And so this will give power. If I typed in sudo Chrome right now, it would pull up Chrome with the power to alter anything on my computer. I'm not going to do that. That would be moderately insane. I am going to give sudo power though to my text editor. Uh, giving sudo power to my text editor. There are a number of text editors you can use. I generally use this one, which was, uh, which is written for the GNOME desktop, but I, just because it seems to be the one with which I'm the most familiar. And it's a pretty good text editor. So I'm going to do that. And then it's going to ask for my password. It asks for my password because I'm getting at some of the root parts of the computer. And it doesn't want just anybody to be able to hop onto my screen and do that. Uh, you're going to need your password. So, what I've got right now is my text editor, which would come up if I had just gone to text editor on my from from my desktop. Uh, but this one's a little different. You can't tell it's different by looking at it. But this one, because I used sudo to get at it, uh, has way more power than the normal text editor too can. It can get access to files and edit files that I wouldn't be able to edit from my main screen. And there is a file that I need to edit. And that file 
is this one. Uh, I didn't want to take the time to type the whole thing all in or navigate through to it. But what it is, is our policy kit. And our policy kit is on the main is is deep in the deep in the program. But this is our policy kit. And what the policies that it sets all actually all have to do with turning the computer on and turning the computer off. So we're going to go there. Hopefully you can see that it's user USR slash share slash P O L K I T dash one slash actions slash org dot free desktop dot console kit dot policy so that's what we want to open and here it comes open and it's actually just a normal XML file now one of the things that I always do if I'm going to mess with anything this deep in the system is I always save a copy of it um, I always save a, a copy of it because I don't want to uh, I don't want to, to lose this I don't want the if I make a change and it doesn't work out uh, I don't want that to, to be the end of it so I'm actually going to save it on my real life desktop and I've done this before but um, So yeah, I'm gonna go to my desktop and save it. And the reason I did that was if I make a mistake here, which I won't, but if I make a mistake, I can always revert back to the old one. And that makes it safe. Now this is our policy kit and it's just a regular XML document. It's actually very, very clear. But here's the thing that I want to change. It says stop the system when multiple users are logged in right here. A system policy prevents stopping the system when other users are logged in. I don't want that. Uh, so now it says allow inactive. Well I certainly don't want it to happen just any time for the the user to stop when, when things are, are logged in. So, but allow active. Well, yes. If I actively am shutting down the system, I want it to allow it. And that's all I do. And then I hit save. Normally, I could have done all that just from the desktop without using sudo, but it would have actually said I couldn't save at this point because I didn't have I, I wasn't I wasn't going with my root access then I close it and I can go ahead and close the terminal and when I come up here and I shut down next time it will shut down even though my wife is logged in so that's how you do it it's uh, it's both complicated and simple it's actually pretty simple uh, once you know what you're doing and you can make changes even if they are a bad idea which to a large extent this is a bad idea uh, I'm gonna do it we're gonna leave it this way but it's possible that at some point we could lose some unsaved work because we made that choice